What's up everyone, we're back. I'm Dr. Shaw, Dr. Maxfield, and welcome back to our channel, Dr. Lee, where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology. Today might be one of the most important videos we've ever done. And you think he's kidding, but he is not. I don't think I have ever heard him be so worked up about a skincare topic to date, not even fragrance. So I've been thinking about this day and night, and every time I wash my skin, I think about this concept, and I just can't seem to let it go. My goal is to convince Dr. Maxfield that my hypothesis is true, and I'm gonna convince all of you in this video. The question is, is water ruining your skin? Here we go. Here we go. I think with this story, we have to start at the genesis point. Throughout my entire life, my skin did pretty good. Wasn't too irritated, would never get overabundantly dry. Kind of like combo, maybe a little bit on the dry side. All was good. I was living in Wilmington, skin was great. Tremendous, glowing. Some may say, okay? Some people say. Some yeah. people say. Then I go to Kentucky, all is good. Skin is good, wash my hair, my skin, all is good. Moved to Charlotte, and every week that I would go to Charlotte, my skin would get really irritated, especially after I cleansed. And it would just burn and it was dry and it was more irritated than ever before. And even my hair wouldn't cooperate. So I started to become convinced with this idea that the water that I was being exposed to, that I was washing my face with twice a day, was actually making my skin worse because nothing in my skincare routine had changed. And so I started to do a deep dive on whether or not water has actually been studied to affect the quality of the skin. Okay, so I'm getting this from all angles. Dr. Shaw is not the only one bringing this up to me and it actually goes both ways. We have a huge amount of people moving to this area where I live, even the small towns and surrounding areas, tons of people coming in. I hear multiple times a day to the point where I'm kind of annoyed that the water here sucks. People tell me in the context of their skin. They move here, they're showering, your skin has never broken out before. They are like just having your breakouts, the quality of your skin isn't doing well. And I can relate to this to some extent with hair. Maybe my skin's a little more resilient, who knows? But I do notice when I go on vacation somewhere, your hair reacts differently. Like it doesn't have the same volume, it doesn't have the same this, it doesn't have that. And I, I am 100% convinced water contributes to that. So now Dr. Shaw is going to build the case for how water affects your skin. Right. And to double down on this, I even started to carry my own shampoos, my own body washes, everything with me so that I could have the same routine across the board to prove that Charlotte was the problem, that this was causing my skin issues. So I do this deep dive. I start combing through all the papers and it turns out that there's actually an overwhelming amount of data on the fact that the water hardness specifically could affect your skin. So there was really two hypotheses. One, people thought that it was the water hardness, so specifically looking at different minerals like calcium carbonate and magnesium affecting the skin and then chlorine affecting the skin. So a lot of people pointed to chlorine being the problem. So when we look at these studies and they look at population-based cohort studies, so you're talking about entire populations, they've looked at a Danish database, they've looked at a British database, and they've shown that in areas where the water has increased hardness, increased specifically of calcium carbonate, that there's higher incidences of atopic dermatitis or eczema and sensitive skin. So to look at this a little bit further, they also looked at chlorine and what they actually found interestingly was that chlorine didn't nearly have as much of an effect. And so what they found in all these studies across the board was that if you had high levels of calcium carbonate, that it increased transepidermal water loss, so it increased dryness of the skin, it increased irritation of the skin, and it also increased the risk of developing eczema and atopic dermatitis in populations where the water hardness was increased. What they also found was that chlorine didn't have nearly as much of an effect on the skin. And this makes sense because, so for any time I hear data, new data, old data, just someone talking to me as I'm walking down the road, it goes through a filter. And in this filter, and right now, he's got me at, if something damaged, let's just say if anything damaged your skin very early on in life, which I completely agree, this harsh water can definitely damage your skin on a daily basis. It's gonna impact everything you're doing with your skincare. But if you damage your skin earlier on, can that increase your risk of atopic dermatitis, eczema? Absolutely. We know this across the board with studies in other contexts. If you have healthy skin barrier habits, they even have studies like if you apply moisturizer early on in life, it's gonna decrease the incidence of atopic dermatitis later because allergens can't get through that intact barrier of the skin. So, okay, okay, I, I buy all this because this all makes sense in the setting of everything else we know about dermatology and skin. Okay, so I want to read the conclusion of this one article that I read because this to me just confirmed everything that I believed. And when I read this, this comes from 2018, Journal of Investigative Dermatology. And the statement is, 
The skin of each participant was washed with sodium lauryl sulfate in water of varying hardness levels and chlorine concentration, rinsed and covered with chambers to determine the effect of the surfactant residue. Sites washed with hard water, calcium carbonate, had significantly increased sodium lauryl sulfate deposits. These deposits increased transepidermal water loss and caused irritation, particularly in people with atopic dermatitis. A clear effect of chlorine was not observed. Water softening can mitigate the negative effects of hard water, barrier impairment, resulting from interaction between hard water and surfactants is a contributory factor to the development of atopic dermatitis. Installation of a water softener early in life may be able to prevent atopic dermatitis, but an interventional study is required to confirm this hypothesis. I don't know. It's like, what questions do you have after that? So I do agree that all of this physiologically makes sense. And actually what I think is a really important thing is how perhaps blind we are to this daily routine because this is something you do every day. Actually, every time you wash your face, your cleanser is mixing with the water you're using. Your active ingredients are coming in contact with the water you're using. All of this has this very complex interplay. Sodium lauryl sulfate is probably a good marker of how if you improperly wash, your skin is be more damaged and it's gonna to lead to this cascade of events that things are gonna be less effective. So, I mean, I don't have like a real critique for you at this point. I don't think I intended to because I think I understood where this was gonna go. But uh, yeah, I'm on board so far. I don't know what else you have. All right, so the next question is, and I'm actually very curious about this. So I definitely need to see in the comments whether or not any of you believe that there is anywhere that you either lived or traveled to where your skin became suddenly worse or suddenly better based on where you were. I am gonna confirm further hypothesis off of this, but I wanna see in the comments below. The next question I think that everyone's gonna have, including myself, is if your water is ruining your skin, what can you do about it? Well, you could move. That could be an option. But if you can't move, how do you remove the things that are causing the issues with your skin? What I started to look at was how do I get a filter for my faucet in order to improve this issue. So I looked into this. Most of the filters were advertising that they were removing chlorine from the water, which the data suggests that maybe it causes issues, but not nearly as much as calcium carbonate. So basically that's the answer is you wanna look for something that's gonna remove both calcium carbonate, specifically that's the most important thing. And then probably you wanna remove chlorine as well from the water. And so that's how you're gonna solve this issue. So this is interesting to me because I think this is kind of a novel territory. It's not like this hasn't always been present. This is like an unfamiliar ingredient, right? So basically we need a filter. It's something you would attach to your sink. This would just be a part of your lifestyle routine. Um, and there are a few options out there. So what I started to do for a little while was I got a Brita filter and I said, okay, I'm going to pour this and I'm going to use this to wash my face only when I'm in Charlotte. So I was basically washing myself with like filtered water or sometimes even bottled water, which is slightly insane, but I became more and more convinced. So then anyway, this is what ends up happening. Cure who we've talked about in the past, they have an incredible LED mask. They reach out to us and they tell us that they're developing a water filter. And I said, water filter? I need this water filter. But I said, if you're gonna develop a water filter, you better make sure that this thing removes calcium carbonate, not just chlorine. So I said, okay, fine we will develop it to remove calcium carbonate for the skin. And ultimately, I believe it was developed for me. There are other water filters out there, and I think some of them are now claiming that they can also remove calcium carbonate. That being said, I haven't tried the other ones. I'm sure that they do what they claim to do. This is the only one that I personally tried, and it's incredible. So in addition to being able to remove calcium carbonate as well as chlorine and anything else that's gonna make your water hard and harsh for your skin, they did do studies on this, taking a look at how effective it is, so you can have confidence that this is going to help what you're doing for your skincare routine. And in addition to that, they can help personalize this. So I like this. I'm a big fan of personalization. You can type in your zip code and they will actually be able to tell you the hardness of the water and the composition of the water in your area, which may not matter actually as I'm thinking about it because it's still like, this is like a filter. It's not like they're gonna change the filter for your location, but maybe that's nice to know. You would have a little bit more information about your area, your locale. I like that they put a lot of R&D into their products. <laughs> maybe we annoy them a lot, but ultimately I think they, they care a lot about the products they're putting out. So I'm super excited about this. I do think this is just the tip of the iceberg on this whole topic. So here are some complimenting tips, I think when it comes to either the water or even some of the bacteria on your skin. So let's say your water is now clean. Let's say your skincare routine is great. And let's say you do, you're doing something I've done for a large portion of life, you grab your body bath towel and you dry your face off with it. Or you have your hand towel that who knows who else is using and you're drying your face off with it. This is something that harbors bacteria. So one thing I, you can do, you can have a dedicated face towel. I like this option. It's just every three days you have a dedicated face towel. You just change it out. I actually have 
a little washcloth on my counter for this very purpose. Or you can do the Clean Skin Club. They have the reusable towels. They're biocompostable, biocompostable, compostable, biocompatible, biodegradable, biodegradable. They're biodegradable, so they try to minimize the, e the ecologic impact. That's a really nice way you can do that as well. Other things we've talked about, life hacks to minimize bacteria and damage to your skin that goes unseen pillowcase. They do have pillowcases. I actually took one on my trip with me recently and I really enjoyed it. I don't know why I haven't been traveling with pillowcases before. Maybe I can't bring a pillow, but you can bring that. So there's just some other simple hacks, simple tips to minimize like bacteria, inflammation, irritants on your skin that you may not be thinking about. I like silk pillowcases personally. They also have some, maybe some antimicrobial properties as well. So that could be a good option for you, but simple hygiene changes in your life can also make a difference to your skin as well. Let us know in the comments if any of you have experienced issues with your skin related to the water concentrations in your homes. Also make sure to check what the hardness level is in your area. There are other options out there. We'll probably try to get some more so that we can try them out for you. But ultimately, if you think it's affecting your skin, it may be worth investing in something like this because you're doing all the other things right, but maybe your environment is working against you. From the questions and answers you've given me, you're probably spending $100, $200 a month on your skincare routine. And if water is a contributing factor, it might be the easiest thing in the world to help fix that first and then everything else will fall in line afterwards. So it's just a thought, check it out. But I do wanna hear from you. What has your experience been with this? All right, so did I convince you? You convinced yes me to no. try it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I experienced this with my hair. I don't have much hair, but it's, I still notice a big difference when I go to a new place. So I think it's very meaningful. The data is certainly behind it. It could be a very easy lifestyle intervention that you could incorporate. So yeah, I'm gonna be doing this. All right, well, there we go. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. See you next time.